Hey guys, in this care plan, we will explore acute respiratory distress syndrome. So in this acute respiratory distress syndrome care plan, we're going to talk about the desired outcome, the subjective and objective data, along with the nursing interventions and rationales for each. Acute respiratory distress syndrome, also known as ARDS, is an acute lung condition that's evidenced by bilateral pulmonary infiltrates, which is like fluid in the lungs, and also refractory hypoxemia. So what is refractory hypoxemia? This is hypoxemia that is unresponsive to treatment. Also, the PaO2 level remains low despite increasing the FiO2. So this might be measured with the PaO2 FiO2 ratio. So if it's less than 300, it's mild. If it's less than 200, it's moderate. And if it's less than 100, it's severe. Diffuse damage and fluid filling the alveoli can be caused by anything that initiates an inflammatory or immune response that causes damages to the capillaries around the alveoli. Examples might include sepsis, pulmonary contusions, burns, fat embolisms, massive transfusions of fluid or blood. So our desired outcome is to optimize oxygenation and ventilation while preventing complications like oxygen toxicity and ventilator acquired pneumonia. We need to treat the underlying cause so that the body's immune system and inflammatory responses can decrease and stop causing these reactions in the lungs. Let's take a look at our care plan, starting with the subjective data. So the patient with ARDS is going to be experiencing shortness of breath and weakness. The fluid surrounding or filling the alveoli is preventing the lungs from properly oxygenating the blood, causing these symptoms. So the patient may have other symptoms of the underlying condition as well. For example, if the patient is septic, they're probably going to have fevers. Now let's talk about the objective data. So your patient might show signs of that underlying condition. For example, if the patient is having this ARDS because of burns throughout their body, you will see them. So the patient with ARDS will have hypoxemia and hypercapnia requiring mechanical ventilation as they are unable to effectively oxygenate their own body. So as mentioned in our patho, the patient will have refractory hypoxemia. Remember, this is where that the PaO2, FiO2 ratio is either mild, moderate, or severe. So the chest x-ray will show diffuse bilateral infiltrates or a whiteout in the lungs. This is because in a chest x-ray, usually the lung should look black like this because there's air. But in this situation, it's going to look white because it's full of fluid, making them appear white in the x-ray. Now let's look at our nursing interventions. So you will ensure that the labs and the x-ray are done so that way you and the doctor can evaluate the patient's condition and severity. If the PF ratio isn't already done in your lab work, you may determine that ratio by dividing PaO2 by FiO2. This will allow you to determine if the hypoxemia is unresponsive to treatment, indicating ARDS. The normal PaO2 is 60 to 100 millimeters per Hg on room air, or 21% FiO2. So you should perform a full respiratory assessment and provide oxygen or medications as needed. This is so that you can detect changes and intervene quickly. For example, if the patient is wheezing, a breathing treatment might help to open those airways up. Remember that oxygen is necessary for our body to function. So if your patient is low on it, they need to be supplemented. If possible, place your patient in a high Fowler's position and encourage them to turn, cough, and deep breathe. This allows for adequate inspiration and expiration and helps to remove secretions from the lungs for better gas exchange. So you will prepare your patient and assist with intubation and then if when they are intubated, you're going to prevent ventilator associated pneumonia. So it's super, super important to communicate the patient decline with the respiratory therapist and the physician immediately. This is so that you decrease wasted time. We don't have time to waste. And then once they are intubated and on the ventilator, you want to do anything you can to avoid VAP, okay, because it worsens the ARDS. So most facilities actually have a VAP bundle 
to help you prevent this from happening. So you will assist to treat the underlying disease depending on what it is. So if the patient has pneumonia, you're gonna give them antibiotics. If the patient has a PE, you're gonna administer the appropriate anticoagulants, such as heparin. So the underlying cause has to be treated and routinely reevaluated for the patient to progress. So you'll monitor the hemodynamics of your patient. So the damage and the decreased compliance in the lungs causes the pressure in those lungs to build up. This can cause pressure to increase on the vessels, especially the major vessels, leading to decreased cardiac output. So hypoxia can also cause ischemia to the heart muscle, ultimately leading to cardiogenic shock. So part of the patho of ARDS is excessive fluid buildup in the alveoli, right? So it's super important to help manage and clear those secretions as much as you can by encouraging coughing and deep breathing and suction as needed. So that way gas exchange can occur appropriately. Thanks for watching another nursing.com lesson. Click the link below in the description to watch thousands more lessons over on nursing.com. Also, be sure to hit the subscribe and the little bell to make sure you're reminded when new lessons come out. And if you wanna just keep watching more lessons, go ahead and click this video over here to continue learning. Like we always say here at nursing.com, happy nursing.